Hi, my friend. It's Pat Sloan here for my Monday night version of my daily video called the Fireside Chat. So I've got something warm and cozy to drink. Yes, then we'll switch to wine. <laughs> so we got a couple things going on today. Let's first do the topic. So the topic of the day of, you know, is on the calendar. So if you've not downloaded the calendar, it's below. And yes, I will be working on the next calendar uh, to get it up before the, the 1st of November. But I wanted you to take a look at your fabrics. And I think most of us, unless maybe you're a really new quilter, uh, most of us have that one piece of fabric that we just can't cut. We either can't cut it, we can't find the kind of project we want to do with it, or you know whatever whatever it is. So I want you to look and see what that fabric is, where you have it, is there a way you can use it? And I know many of us have more than one of these. <laughs> so I have one, and I'm gonna show it to you here. I've got a good chunk of it, a couple yards, I think, because it's a large scale print. That was my uh, theory on why I needed a bigger piece. It is by Hoffman and it has the nautical scenes. Uh, years ago, somebody did a tote bag, like a big, sort of a big travel bag with this fabric. And I was like, oh, I just love that. I love the nautical, I love the sea. Uh, so it's got the mermaid, it's got the captain, it's got the ship. So I have one of the panels with the ship. There's the, the big whale. Um, I don't know, there's the ship. You can see the big circle. So this is my fabric. I have others too, but this one, this is the one I have closest out that I need. I don't even, if I can find it somewhere, I'll link it to you. Otherwise it might be out of print. I don't know, but that is mine. I would like to know where, what yours is. And if you, I still would like to do a bag. That's like, like a big, Annie's has a, a travel bag. And I talked to Annie about what she has. So she has a travel bag. So someday that'll probably be a travel bag. Uh, and I'll probably try to use up as much as I can of it. Uh, so that I get to enjoy it and see it on some sort of a nice, sturdy, you know, bag, big, big project bag. All right. Today starts charming Christmas trees. Yes. I know a lot of you did this one already, but many did not. You know, there's a group of you that did it when it first was published. Uh, so now for those of us who didn't do it then, there are two versions. There is this with the charm pack, which are five inch squares. And then with the mini charms, which are the two and a half inch. Sue made this one for me. She sewed that one up for me. And I am going to have the mini one. And I'm going to show you a bit about c color and laying out, which I did on my website today. I took some pictures and so you'll see that there, but I want to show it to you here on the video too. Because first of all, when you get your, your charm pack, uh, the, these mini charms or the charm pack, you want to take a look at the colors. And this one has just three, this particular charm pack. And I'm going to open this up. And you do need not, I don't think all of two charm packs, but you need two charm packs to do the, the tree with the border. If you didn't do the border, if you know like around it there then you could just use one charm pack okay little bag is there get him out of there ah, okay down here now this is called i ripped the paper off called mini called country christmas by ann um ann sutton of bunny hill so basically it has red it has white and gray so those, this particular charm pack just has the three colorways. Um, and what I did with the first charm pack is I took and laid out with like, you know, all red and gray. I'm going to show you that in a second. So, but you want to take your charm pack and do this. We talked about that in the other video. Now, if I put it on white, I could do, I'm just going to take a few of the pieces, but I could do like the red and gray on white because that shows up you know really well 
There we go. I don't want the same design. Like I don't want the tree next to the tree. I'm picky like that. And then you would, you know, use the reds and, you know, come along like this. Here we go. See, there's, oops, not, not white because the white won't show, right? So you've got gray. Let me just put these down, gray and gray, just to show you what's doing on white. So I lay it out like this. And you'll, when you go to my website, you'll see it, the full one laid out. But this gives me a feel, and I can lay out all the colors and see what's going on. Now, what happened was is when I did it on the gray, which is what I want to use, I just thought, well, I'm going to save all the white for the outer rim and do just red and gray, the light gray for this part. So this is what I did. And I thought, oh, it looks really dull, really, really dull. So what I had to do was spark it up with some white. So I had to sprinkle in a few white and then it totally starts to transform it and it looks so much nicer. Let me just, these aren't, don't have much pattern on them, but there you get an idea. And you'll see how I did that. Then what happened was I ended up with like this, too many of the same reds together, you know, and so I had to adjust that because the red is such a strong color. It brought my eye to that. Now let's look at the one up on the wall with the holly berries, which uh, is laid out already. So you can see that those fabrics are all sprinkled around. There were more than three colors in that fabric line. So it could go, so there were more piles to work with. And I don't mind that the lights sort of blend a bit into the white background because uh, we didn't use the white, white pieces from that. Just the ones that had enough pattern that you could get a definition. So you can see how that looks. So go to my website and take a look and your assignment for this week to get this project kicked off is to separate into colors and do a mock-up and then, and then cut all your backgrounds. So this is what I did for the mini version. Let me see if I can get the paper over here. So you down, I download either, the, you have to do two, there's two separate patterns, either the mini charms or the regular charms. So you print off the pattern and I cut all the backgrounds and then I laid these out and that is what <clears throat> this particular pile is. They are actually in the order that I figured out so that I'm ready, ready to go when I start to sew this. So, okay, so we're doing this in three weeks. So basically this week, cut everything out, do the layout. Next week, sew the middle. Uh, and then if you get ambitious, start on the border next week. And the week after that will be to finish it. If you haven't done the borders yet, put the borders on and get it quilted. If you are gonna quilt it yourself, you could do it very simply. Sue just did straight lines on mine. And so that's probably what I'll do on this little mini, which will be even faster. The mini is, the patterns always tell you what size. The mini is 26 by 26. And uh, if you just want to do the tree, they make a cute pillow. They're a good pillow size because somebody did that. All right, now I've got to put this over here so I don't dump it. There we go, because i got other things to show you. There we go. Ah, so last video on Saturday, I forgot to show you the pillow, the fall pillow. We're in the seasonal portion today. Oh, by the way, I have a giveaway at the end. So stay to the end, okay? Don't pop out. Um, so here is my pillow. This was done uh, with the one piece of fabric that I had left and I was hoping to use all of it. So I did the back too with the same fabric. So I was hoping that I would pretty much use all of this because I put it in the layer cake quilt, which is hanging above my couch. And I thought, I just want to use it up because <clears throat> I want to enjoy it. So that I was actually able to use, I don't even think I had a square left. There were just some little slivers. I pretty much had to use everything up. But I also had to, let's see, come down here. I, you know, to do the backing panel, one panel, there's no seam. So that's the one I put on the outside. The other panel in here has, uh, has some seams. They're all down here. They're, they're hard to see, but there's a seam along here and then a seam along here. But I have to tell you, this, <laughs> this pillow, 
this pillow, which should have been so easy, right? I did do a little, did a little rim around here. I did a wave stitch horizontal to accent visually that it's a, it's a rectangular pillow. So I did a horizontal little wave stitch. But when I got to the backing, I made every mistake possible. And I was like, Ugh, because I knew I had to sew this extra piece on here. And so first of all, I sewed it on the wrong. Well, first of all, I sewed the seam here, you know, like to cover the edge. I sewed that on this side. So now they were too short. So I had to unsew that on both of them. And then this part here, the extra, I sewed it to the wrong end. I sewed it on here. So I had to take that off. <laughs> then I was like, okay, this can't, everything is like, can't, can't do that. It's too much. So someone asked how much overlap do I have? I've, I do a pretty generous overlap because when you pull it, if you don't have enough overlap, it gaps. And I, even though it's behind the pillow, I don't want it gapping. So my overlap is about that much, which is about three inches, three to three and a half, four inches um, on, this, on this particular pillow. So there you go. It looks super cute. There's a picture on my website of three pillows on my sofa. Now the cross stitch pillow was mailed out to the Fat Quarter Shop because Kimberly wants to show it on one of her videos coming up. Hopefully it should be this week. So if you watch Kimberly's videos of the Fat Quarter Shop, you'll see the cross stitch pillow. So it's on there. All right. Now I had another request. I had another request <laughs> to show you the backing of the Barbie quilt. And lo and behold, I Dun, 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 drum roll. I got the binding on the Barbie quilt. I am on a binding roll because I've decided that I just don't want these 800 quilts sitting here that need binding. And you know 800 is a made up number. I use 800 for everything for those of you who, who hadn't caught on to that yet. It's, it's just to be silly. It doesn't mean really that I have 800 quilts waiting for binding. I think if I did, I'd have to shoot myself. <laughs> that, that would just be impossible. So here is the Barbie stripe, the same stripe you see here I use for the binding and I put it on by machine um, because it wears my hands out too much. I do all my bindings by machine anyways, but even now, you know, it, it wears my hands out a little bit too much uh, to do too much hand work. It's building up. The strength is building up, but I have a ways to go. So. Let me show you the Barbie quilt one more time. Let me just move my rolling assistant to the side here so I don't bang everything off of it. That would be what would happen today. So here's Barbie again with her binding. So I think she looks darling for a little girl. Hold it up. I'll put a picture out there. I have to sew the label down, put my name on it. But uh, several of you want to know the backing. This is an older fabric. And it is uh, very old, very, very old, like 15 years ago, maybe more. Uh, but it is a, uh, I had bought a lot of it. So it is a brushed cotton. So it feels a bit like a flannel, just a little tiny, tiny bit. It's a barely brushed on one side and not on the other. It's a woven. So that is what I back this with. Uh, I need to finish, sew the label down and then give it a wash and then send it off so that that, that is complete. Gotta wrap up everything, gotta be sure. Don't want stuff hanging around that's not done right now. I mean, I'm in this mode like, because I was on travel for so much and for so many years. You know, we travel for about 18 years uh, on a fairly regular basis. So I would come home and when I came home, there was only, there were certain things I could only do at home. So I'd have to do all those. And somehow the bindings, if they weren't that important to get them done, I just left them. But then something else important, more important would come in. And so these sort of pieces that, you know, were sort of the projects were already way done. And, in, and so they all need, they need the binding. Totally need the binding. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to talk about cozy things a little bit more. I'm just loving all your blocks. I'm loving that a bunch of you are starting to read the hookah books or picking up one and reading it and learning about it. Um, I just, I'm going to show you the cover. The other day, you know how when you look at books and you get recommended other books, you know, of course, same thing with YouTube videos. You look at one, you get recommended for more, right? 
it's, and it's always like something else. Like, yeah, well, yeah, like I like that too. Um, so what I got recommended to look at this book. So I got a sample of it. Um, it's called How to Huga, The Nordic Secret to Happy Life. Um, and this is by Sign Johansson. So here's the cover of this one. And there's more photography in this one. Uh, I have it a digital only at this point. Um, I haven't really bought any of these as a print copy, but I might get this one as a print copy. I'm going to read the digital first. The thing I'm loving about this one is her focus is strongly on the lifestyle portion of it, uh, not the sort of formula type uh, that, that I get out of the other ones. Um, I just love that, you know, it's, it, you make it work for you. And she talks about some different things that they can, that I connect to. So I will link you to this one. And there are some pretty photos I had. So I don't know, like, like a photo book always is better in hard copy to me. So that's why I may end up getting that one as a hard copy. Um, but I've also been uh, lighting my candles. This was one that I was given as a gift this um, summer. Uh, it smells, it's called fruit slices. It smells um, more lemony than other fruits, but it is delightful and has a nice pretty little glimmer in the evenings and when we take a little break be before we eat dinner we sit in the living room uh, greg and i and we just sort of relax together for a little bit we read or just talk um, even though we're in the house all day we do our own thing so it's nice to just have that break in the living room and i have a really pretty candle that i've lit in there on the on the um, coffee table uh, so um, I want to know, like, what are you, are you, are you thinking about this? Are you incorporating some things? Like for me, starting to light the candles every day is like really good. Reading the books, I'm looking at it thinking, yes, you know, I need to get outside more. Um, when I fell and broke my wrist, it was, you know, it was summer and it was delightful outside, but I didn't have the energy. I didn't have the brain power to go out much. You know, I would sit outside a little bit and I can't garden, I can't really lift or pull or do things like that yet. I still have a bunch of strength training that has to happen. Uh, so I don't want to stress on that. And so I really can't do a whole lot outside, but I need to start incorporating that because it's going to get cold here. And, uh, you know, then I'll probably have to bundle up and take walks. And, and my mindset is now loosening up to like, okay, I can incorporate this back into my routine. And that's what I think happens to us when you have a lot of things that go on where something huge might impact your schedule or your life, uh, like me with breaking my wrist. So you might have a sick family member or, um, you know, something where you have to move, you know, maybe you have to relocate for a job. And, um, you know, so things when they shift your whole routine, then it's sometimes hard to bring back those things you enjoy. That's what I'm realizing and what I really want to focus with the Huga for. Now, one of the friends just wrote me too that she's listening to the books on tape. She got whichever one she got and she's listening to it uh, instead of reading it. So for those of you who like audio, a bunch of those are on audio as well. So you might give that a listen and see. I personally am not, I can't get into audio books. I think what happens is my brain just drifts away. I don't, I don't listen then. Um, and so I've missed, then I'll have missed like whole sections because I start thinking about something else and it just becomes background noise. I think, <laughs> I think that's from many years of working in an office when you basically have to tune out the chatter of other people in an office. And so, you know, when that happens, so I'm very good at tuning out things. I can tune out a lot of background noise and just laser in focus whatever I'm working on and so that's why I think the audiobooks don't work for me because my brain just clicks into that mode it's like oh that's background noise let's just put that behind here where we can't hear it and then all of a sudden it's like you know like 10 chapters I haven't heard a thing that's like <laughs> I don't know what you do I don't know how you do that but let me know the other thing I was thinking about is uh, how Oh, it's like, like, you know, I want to do some crochet. And so I thought, where did I find? So I had been looking around. I'd seen this really cute variegated yarn, which is called Chunky Cakes, Karen Chunky Cakes. And there's this quilt 
I mean, quilt. There's an afghan for it. My great grandma used to crochet uh, ripple afghans all the time, and I've crocheted, but not really great, but I've crocheted afghans. And I thought, I want to do something with this variegated yarn. And then I decided, you know, I don't have a lot of yarn, but some of it had been given to me. And so I thought, you know, I'm getting rid of this yarn. So Sue, who made this for me, she does a lot with yarn, and she has, um, I think, her granddaughter who's knitting now. So I asked Sue, will you take my yarn? It's just like a bag of it. And then what I'm going to do is just buy for this afghan or maybe a different one. This is with the granny squares sort of style, like a rectangle that's a big granny square. I'll link you up to it if you crochet. But I'm also thinking maybe it's something a little bit simpler, but I'm just going to buy yarn for that. And then this winter I will crochet that like in, maybe for half an hour in the evenings, I'll work on it when we're sitting in the living room, that kind of a thing. Um, you know, I'm trying to add back the things that I love, like the cross stitch. I need to add, I need to work that back in because, you know, I've been focusing right now on getting these bindings done, which in the evening, I've like three evenings in a row, I have done binding or something working on binding. I thought, well, if I keep like every other day even, be sure I work on it, it'll really get that done. And then it'll let me bring in some of these other things a little bit easier. You know, have a little bit more time for them. I also, well, okay, before I say that, it's like, tell me what, what you have like that. You know, what is it that you're, you know, does that resonate with you? Do you have something that you're trying to add back in? It might even just be quilting. Some of you, uh, with the pandemic, the quilting may have taken a back seat. You know, it may have been like, you just don't have the energy. You just don't have the desire. And so if you want to add it back in, now is the time, I think. Now is the time because we still have months of this. Uh, and so we just need to make time for what's important. And it's, I, I like reading the Huga books because I feel like they give me a focus to think about all this too. Alrighty. Now I had some super cute presents that came. I wanted to thank the people who sent them. So nice. Um, because I don't have, for one, I don't have an email or I can't find where you may have written to me. So I don't know where it was. But first of all, no, Peggy, I, I talked to. This was from Peggy. She sent, um, no, that's not hers. Um, Peggy sent two presents. She sent this fabric that has yarn. See, look at that. Isn't that cute? Fabric with yarn. And then this darling tea towel. Or like, oh, so cute. So cute with Believe on the license plate. I love it. From our Believe so along last year. Thank you, Peggy. And so we were writing back and forth. So I was able to tell Peggy I got it. I got this very nice note from Nance on this super cute card. <clears throat> and then this is the one I can't find you to thank you. So I hope you're watching. Um, this came from Karina. I'm not going to read that right. Yeah, Karina. So Karina sent me this really pretty with the shells. You know, I love shells. She sent me a thimble to go with the collection. And I've actually been to Jerusalem. And some absolutely darling Christmas fabric. Look at this Christmas fabric. Look. Look how cute this is. It's got all the words. I love it. It says it's... It's beginning to smell a lot like Christmas. All you need is love and Christmas. Cocoa, baking, cheer, sugar spice, and then of course the fabric uh, with all the cute little baking things. Baking is the other thing I want to, I really, really, really want to do some bread. I mean like really want to do some bread. So that is another thing. And like, like how many hours in the day? I still have to do the exercises. So yeah, that still has to happen. But um, I'm feeling like I can start figuring out how to, to do a bit more. And for those of you who noticed, I had my quilting t-shirt on today because it's cozy. This is the, uh, it's one for the Fat Quarter Shop. It's got the same pattern. This is an orange peel pattern, which you can do as applique like this, or do it as the quilting, which is on my Dear Jane. My dear Jane that's hanging on there, which is one of the ones still waiting, and it's still waiting for binding or on the bi top of the binding list. But look at the table. The tabletop is clear. Yes. Yes. My Gemini, the Gemini is a die cut machine, is sitting there, but the tabletop is clear. I'm very excited about that. Because <laughs> I, I want to fire up the Tierra. I can't, I'm not sure I can free motion yet. 
it's just um, I could do a little piece you know then I can just do that here on the Solaris you know that's what I would do a bigger piece on and it's just that bulk that's a little hard it's a little hard to keep hold of it for very long okay I've got a little giveaway because it's been a while since I've done a giveaway on here uh, so I thought for fall I let me just take a look I have some fall things you're going to leave a comment at my website. Don't be leaving it at YouTube because it won't count. I won't look here. So I have these fall fabrics. Whoops. These are from Benertex. And some of them are still available. I'll link you over. You can get them. Look at that. In case you want more or if you don't win, you just want to get them. And they have the gold on them. <gasps> They're just so gorgeous. I think I showed you these the other day. So this group of them is the prize plus, look at this, look, I love that. I love that floral. These would make like really cute table placemats, I think, and napkins, wouldn't they? Plus I have a cross stitch from the Cross Stitch Club. The Fat Quarter Shop does a club. And so I have this one called Home for You and some thread, one of these thread kits from Fright Night. And, you know, my bag I've been using, the Halloween bag. Whoops, there you go. There's the fry. I didn't take it out of the package. See, there you go. You can keep your cross stitch in it, or you can do a, um, you know, just do it for a project bag, for another kind of project, a, a fall project, Halloween project. And then one of these great, great uh, Ulfa craft knights, knives. These are a brand new style of craft knife. Uh, which you'll get one of these in the that is my giveaway so what um, I want you to do we're just going to stay on the cozy and the huga for today's answer over at my website which is down below uh, so tell me what thing you are you know what type of cozy Thing, are you trying to add back into your life? Are you trying to add in something that you're doing? Are you just trying to um, make your environment more cozy? Uh, tell me what it is. <clears throat> and for a bonus, you can tell me if you've bought or read any of the books uh, and which one you liked if you are reading it. Thank you, my friend. This has been great. Can't find my remote. <laughs> I just love talking with you on Monday nights so that we can have more of you on the live portion of the chat. Thank you for using my links below. I love you. Mwah. See you online.